Hi everyone, I'm Manuel Bebo and let's talk about state in Compose. State is any value in an app that can change over time. Apps are stateful by nature, whether they store data locally or in a server, state is what makes them valuable. In this talk, we'll look at JSNAC, snack ordering app that is one of the Compose samples. State is really important for this app. What items to show on the screen, showing snacks filtered by the user, or keeping track of the shopping cart. State plays a crucial role in most applications. The composition is the description of the UI built by Compose that describes the current state of the app. Here, you can see how the composition can be visually represented for the search screen. There, you can find a search bar, divider, and suggestions. All that part of the destination of the navigation graph of the app. In declarative frameworks like Compose, you describe the app's current state, and the framework takes care of updating the UI for you whenever state changes. For example, when navigating to the cart screen, Compose re-executes that part of the UI that is affected by the state change. Now, instead of search, the navigation host is updated to display the cart screen. As every piece of UI is a composable function, when state changes, a recomposition takes place to display the new data on the screen. Let's focus on an individual cart item. It is an element that shows an item in your shopping cart and lets you change the quantity. We can build the UI using a row with two buttons and a text. But how do we keep track of the current quantity of the item in the cart? If we simply add a mutable variable to the composable function, we see that nothing happens. When tapping the increment and decrement buttons, the quantity doesn't change. The function is not recomposed with the state change, and that's because the quantity variable is not tracked by Compose. Compose has a special state tracking system in place that schedules recompositions for any composables that read a particular state. This allows Compose to be granular and just recompose those composable functions that need to change, not the whole UI. This is achieved by tracking not only writes, that is, state changes, but also reads to the state. Use Compose's state and mutable state types to make state observable. Compose will keep track of those composables that read state value properties and trigger a recomposition when its value changes. You can use the mutable state of function to create a mutable state. It takes in an initial value that can be mutated. Here, we use the value property to read and write the quantity state. But even if it's tracked by Compose and recompositions are triggered, you can see that the UI doesn't display the state changes. The issue is that even if the function recomposes, quantity is always initialized to 1. In fact, this is a common mistake. That's why attempting to write this code gives a compile error. To reuse the quantity state across recompositions, we need to make it part of the composition. To do that, you can store objects in the composition by using the remember composable function. It can be used to store both mutable and immutable objects. Remembering state is something you must do for state that is created in the composition, that is, inside composable functions. In this way, the state will be part of the composition and will be reused when the function recomposes. As you can see now, our cart item works as we expect. Since quantity is preserved across recompositions, the new mutated values appear on the screen. As a bonus, Compose also offers Remember Savable. It behaves similarly to Remember, but the stored value will survive the activity and process recreation. This is a good way for UI data to survive configuration changes. Remember Savable makes sense for UI state like the item quantities or the selected tab, but not for things like a transient animation state. Also, you can use property delegates with the state APIs. You can see that in action with the by keyword. It is a nice way to not have to access the value property every time. 
You should only mutate state outside the scope of a composable function because composables can run frequently and execute in any order. In our code, mutating quantity in the onClick listener is safe because onClick is not a composable function. You can trigger state changes given a user input, such as button clicks or using side effects. You can read more about side effects in our docs. The cart item composable is not reusable in its current form because it's always initializing its private quantity state to 1. Not every item in the cart will have that quantity to start with, but also a user might have items in the cart from previous sessions. Similar to what we do with dependency injection, to make the cart item reusable, we need to pass the quantity as a parameter to the function. But not only that, the quantity passed to cart item should be immutable to respect the single source of truth principle. This principle encourages structuring the code so that data is only modified in one place. In this case, if cart item doesn't own the state, it shouldn't be updating it. Therefore, cart item needs to notify the caller when the user interacts with the buttons to trigger state updates. Now that cart item is reusable, who owns the quantity for each cart item and the logic to update the state? We can imagine that something like a cart composable should have the information of all cart items and logic to update them accordingly. The process we followed to make cart item reusable is called state hoisting. We hoisted the quantity state from cart item to cart. State hoisting is a pattern of moving private state out of a composable to make it less stateful, therefore more reusable in your app. Stateless composable is a composable that doesn't hold any private state at all. Composables should receive state as parameters and communicate events up using lambdas. This makes the composable more reusable and testable, as it is not coupled to any specific way of handling data. State that is hoisted this way can be shared and intercepted if needed, and it complies with the single source of truth principle. Here, we have the stateless version of cart item receiving the quantity to display a state and exposing user interactions as events. Cart, that displays the different cart items in a laser column, is responsible for calling cart item with the right information. The actual items on the cart is application data that we retrieve from cart view model. For each cart item, we pass in its particular quantity, and the logic to increment or decrement quantities is delegated to the view model as the owner of cart data. State hoisting is a pattern widely used in Compose. You can see it in most Compose APIs as a way to intercept and control the state used internally by those UI elements. As intercepting state is optional, default parameters are a powerful language construct. For example, if you need to control or share scaffold state, you can pass the state in. If not, it is created by default. How high do you hoist state? It is a matter of data ownership. When in doubt, hoist state to at least the lowest common ancestor of those composables that need access to that state. For example, the lowest common ancestor of cart items is cart, which is the one calling them with the right information. As another principle, composables should take only the parameters that they need. In JSNAC, we provide stateless cart composable that takes only what it needs as a parameter. This makes this composable easier to preview and test. It complies with the single source of truth principle, and it is more reusable in case we need to show it alongside another screen, if the window size is big enough, for example. Apart from this, we also provide stateful overwrite that is opinionated in the way that it handles state and events. This version of cart calls the stateless cart composable using a cart view model that handles the business logic and state. This pattern of having both stateful and stateless, or less stateful composable, provides a good balance between being able to reuse the composable if needed and having an opinionated way to use it in your app. 
In this case, using view models that are well integrated with Compose navigation. To read more about state and state hoisting, check out the documentation. State should be hoisted to at least the lowest common ancestor, but should it always be in the composable itself? Let's examine the different ways to manage and define a source of truth for different types of state. Composables for simple UI element state management, state holders for complex UI element state management, and architecture components view models as a special type of state holders that provides access to business logic and prepares application data for presentation. Before we start, it is important to define what we mean when we talk about specific terms. UI element state is the hoisted state of UI elements, for example, scaffold state. The screen or UI state is what needs to be displayed on the screen, for example, cart UI state that can contain the cart items, messages to show to the user, or loading flags. This state is usually connected with other layers of the hierarchy because it contains application data. The UI behavior logic is related to how to display state changes on the screen, for example, navigation logic or showing snack bars. The UI behavior logic should always live in the composition. The business logic is what to do with state changes, for example, making a payment or storing user preferences. This logic is usually placed in the business or data layers, never in the UI layer. Now that we are all on the same page, let's see the different ways of handling state. If the UI element state to handle is simple, it could be placed in the composable itself. In this example, the Jesna Cap composable owns the scaffold state. As scaffold state contains mutable properties, all interactions with it should happen in this composable. Otherwise, if we pass it to other composables, they could mutate its state and that doesn't comply with the single source of truth principle and also makes tracking down bugs more difficult. But in reality, things can get more complicated. Jesna Cap, apart from emitting UI elements, is in charge of showing snack bars, navigating to the proper screens, setting up the bottom bar, and so on. Having all of that in the composable can make it difficult to read and understand. Following the separation of concerns principle, we can delegate the UI logic and UI element state to a different class that we call state holder, and leave the composable function to just emit UI elements. JSNAC app state will be the source of truth for JSNAC app's UI element state, so all state writes should happen inside the class. This state holder is a plain class that will be created and remembered in the composition. Therefore, it will be scoped to the composable that creates it. JSNAC app state is just a plain class, and since it follows the composable lifecycle, it can take compose dependencies without worrying about memory leaks. State holders can also have composable properties that will cause recompositions if they change. In this case, whether or not to show the bottom bar. And it contains UI-related logic, such as navigation logic. As covered in the talk previously, data must be remembered in order to reuse it across recompositions. It is a good practice to provide methods to remember state holders if they take dependencies. In here, we pass in the dependencies to remember as well to get a new instance of JSNAC app state if any of the dependencies change. Now, in JSNAC app, we get an instance of the app state that we use to pass the hoisted state into composables, check when we need to show UI elements, and call functions to trigger UI-related actions. In a nutshell, state holder is a plain class that hoists UI element state and contains UI-related logic. This favors separation of concerns by reducing composables complexity and favoring testability. It also makes state hoisting easier, as there is only one state to hoist instead of multiple states. State holders can be really simple and focused. For example, this search state class for a search screen that only contains a list of active filters and search results. 
Use a state holder to help you manage complexity when you need to track state or UI logic. Apart from state holders, we also have view models that are classes that extend the architecture components view model class. View models can be used as state holders for state that is determined by business logic. View models have two responsibilities. First, providing access to the business logic of the application that is usually placed in other layers of the hierarchy, such as repositories or use cases. And second, preparing the application data for presentation in a particular screen. This is the UI state of the screen represented with an observable type. In a pure Compose app, we can use Compose's state types, but in a hybrid app, you might use another observable construct, like Stateflow. View models survive configuration changes, so they have a longer lifetime than the composition. They are not part of the composition, therefore, they cannot take state a scope to the composition, for example, a remembered value. Be careful because this could cause memory leaks. As you can see, view models depend on other layers of the hierarchy, for example, repositories or use cases. Remember that if you want your UI to recompose when your state changes, you need to use Compose State APIs. But in this case, since the UI state is kept outside of the composition, it doesn't need to be remembered. You can just consume it, and the function will re-execute whenever it changes. Other layers of the hierarchy usually use streams of data to propagate changes, so it is possible you already get a hold of a flow in your view models. Streams of data also work perfectly with Compose, as there are helper functions to convert streams of data to Compose's observable state APIs. For example, collect a state collects values from the flow and represents them as state, causing a recomposition every time a new value is emitted into the flow. In summary, view models hoist state out of the composition and have a longer lifespan. They are responsible for the business logic of the screen and deciding what data to display, acquiring data from other layers and preparing it for presentation. Due to this, view models are recommended for screen level composables. View models have some benefits over plain state holders, though. Namely, operations triggered by them survive configuration changes. And they are well integrated with other Jetpack libraries, such as Hilt and Navigation. With Hilt, you can get view models using dependencies provided by Hilt with a line of code. And navigation caches view models while the screen is on the backstack, meaning that the data is instantly available when you return to a destination. Then, the view model is cleared when the destination is popped off the backstack, ensuring that your state is automatically cleaned up. All of this is more difficult to do with state holders that follow the life cycle of the composable screen. That said, if these benefits don't apply to your use case or you do things differently, you can move view models' responsibilities into state holders, whatever works best for you. It is also possible for a screen level composable to have state holder and a view model. Since the view model lives longer, state holder could take the view model as a dependency. Putting this into practice, in addition to the cart view model we had in the cart composable, you could also have an additional cart state that contains UI element state and UI logic. For example, the lazy list state to know about the scroll position in large shopping carts, resources to format messages and prices, and the state of each item if we allow them to be expanded to show more information. Both view model and state holder have a place in cart. They serve different purposes and they can work together. If we look closer at their life cycle, cart state will follow the life cycle of the cart composable. It will be removed from the composition when cart is. And cart view model is scoped to a different life cycle, that of the navigation destination, graph, fragment, or activity. Looking at the big picture, the role of each entity is clearly defined. From the UI that contains UI elements to the data layer that contains business logic. 
each serves a particular purpose. Here on the screen, you can see the different entities with their role and the potential dependency relationships between them. Hopefully, the table I showed before makes more sense now. So please keep it in mind for future decisions to have a clear state management story and architecture in your app. To learn more about state in Compose, check out our docs, code labs, and samples. Thank you everyone for listening. I hope this talk helps you get into a composed state of mind. Happy composing and talk to you soon. Bye.